What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be comparing the GOAT of every UFC weight class to the current champion. I'm going to be comparing their resumes and discussing what the current champion needs to do to become the GOAT of their weight class or at least get in the conversation if it does seem kind of unlikely that they're going to at least reach GOAT status but maybe to reach number two or at least be in the convo. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. I'll be comparing the resumes, as I said. I'm going to be saying what they need to do in terms of like wins, opponents, what that would look like. And I'm also going to be giving a percentage chance that I think they actually achieve GOAT status in their division based off all the factors that I'm mentioning. That'll include age and stuff like that. That'll include difficulty of the contenders in their division so yeah that's what i'm going to be talking about in today's video talking about every men's champion sorry no women's mma in today's video i know you guys really like when i talk about women's mma um but yeah let's start off with the flyweight division now first up we got demetrius johnson compared to alejandro pantoja the current champion now you guys are going to notice a bit of differences in their records and you're going to be a bit confused by that and maybe my maths might have been wrong or my research might have uh misled me because i'm going to only be including their flyweight slash or for the other guys their divisional wins i'm not looking at any wins outside of their weight class that they are considered the goat in there will be no moving up a weight class and winning or losing there will be none of that i will only be looking at ufc and i'll also include wec wins um for these guys so yeah just that being said pantoja best wins in my or oh, he is 12 and 3 in the ufc uh, those three losses obviously coming to Figgy, Askrov, and Ortiz. Uh, three title wins, way off Demetrius Johnson, obviously 12 title wins. He's got a fair way to climb DJ as well. He's got losses, but only one of them is actually at 125 in the UFC, and that's to Cejudo, which was a close decision. So that is a definite benefit that he has as well as the level of, uh, as well as the number of wins, I would say. That's why I say there, DJ's advantage is quantity. I think Pantoja's advantage is quality because I think Moreno twice, Rival twice, I'm not counting the tough one, it's not a professional fight. Moreno twice, Rival twice, Urseg close, but you could say that's like comparable to um to DJ and Cejudo, honestly. Um I mean DJ lost, so it's kind of different. But Cap, Perez, uh Cap Perez, Schnell, Wilson Hayes, um, so yeah, if I'm going to have, I got to have Hayes on there because, or Reyes, whatever, because if he's going to be on DJ's list as a title defense, that's why I think DJ's level of title opposition was quite weak at moments. Look, there were some very good ones. There were patches where he's like fighting really deserving guys, but to be fair, Pantoja's kind of going through the same thing. Like Pantoja is gone from Moreno and Urseg, so Moreno and Rival to Urseg, who is quite good, but then just lost, and now Asakura. Um, so you could say he's also getting, you could compare that to, I guess, DJ having to fight Tim Elliott coming from another promotion as a title fight, but like Cejudo, Benavidez twice, Kyoji actually a really good win. I know people go like, who do you beat? Uh, Benavidez, Kyoji? Like, Kyoji's a fucking good win and Benavidez is a good win. Ray Borg, Wilson Reyes, Tim Elliott, eh, Dodson twice, Dodson solid-ish, Moraga, Bagatinov. These are decent wins. Like, I know people are going to be like, who the fuck are these guys? I'm just going to say... You would be saying, people are going to be saying the same thing in 10 years' time when we're talking about Pantoja's title. People are going to be like, who the fuck was Ursek? Like, that's going to be 10 years' time. Unless you make a name out of yourself and become a champion, casual fans will just forget who you are and not realize, like, yeah, that guy was actually fucking solid. So, in my opinion, Pantoja... Um, has slightly better wins, but DJ's wins do get discredited because someone's like, oh, he was just fighting bum flyweights the whole time. Like, no, for the most part, apart from like, I guess, Tim Elliott, and there were some ones where they had to just find any living body to chuck in the cage with him. But apart from that, I do think that, um, that Pantoja, so that DJ's resume is quite underrated because I think people will be like, oh, they're just flyweight bums because the flyweight bums aren't as known as the light heavyweight bums. All the guys from, like, Jones's resume and shit, none of them are, like, that good. Like, I think a lot of DJ's ones are more technical, better fighters. And if you look at a lot of Jones' resume, look at their records. Shogun's record's fucking shit. OSP, Santos, Smith. Like, these guys don't have good records. Even, like, DC is, like, the best record of an opponent. But a lot of Jones's wins and a lot of GSP's wins and stuff have shit records. So, I think people just discredit Pantoja. So, discredit DJ because he's a flyweight. Pantoja, though, what can he do to even get close to GOAT status? I think four, he's got two defenses right now. Uh, I think three more defenses to get him to five would like start, that would easily cement him as the second greatest. And that would then be like a conversation of you can maybe start talking about quality, like a Volk compared to Aldo. But 
Aldo only had seven, I'm pretty sure, whereas DJ's got like 11. So he would need probably like seven defenses total, and then he could maybe get away with the better wins. Like if he beats an Asakura, that's three title offenses. El Bazi Moreno winner, that would be four. If he beats Roy Val again, that'd be five. If he beats like a Kaikara France, that'd be six. If he beats like a. I don't know, fucking Asuel Mabayev, that'd be seven. Pantoja, though, I don't think he's going to get there. It's pretty clear, obviously. Low percentage chance. He's got not as much time. He's on the older side, fourth flyweight as well. Everyone, and I just don't think his style's going to last him that much longer. I think at some point he's going to get chinned uh, or just look kind of shit in a fight and get outdone. So I don't think Pat Doja achieves GOAT status. I think he could get close. I think he could. I think he's one or two away from second place, but I think DJ's just cemented himself so far ahead. And he would have, Pandoja would have needed to win the belt like three, four years earlier than he did to have enough time to even get there, let alone he might lose, but like even if he doesn't lose, he just might run out of time. He'll be like 37 by the time he's even nearing DJ's record. So anyway, let's move on to the bantamweight division. Bantamweight division, Marab Divalishvili is the current champion and Dominic Cruz is considered by many the bantamweight goat. I'll use him for the comparison because I want to make my case that Marab is quite close to becoming the bantamweight goat. Now, he's 11-2 and two in the UFC with his two losses being the first two fights of his UFC career. He's since then gone 11-0. and 0. Dominic Cruz, not the best record, 14-4. and 4. Now, he's got some later career losses, obviously. He was on a big run uh, and then, obviously, the Garbrandt loss, which was a bad look. Garbrandt, uh, who else? It was Garbrandt, it was Cheeto Vera, and it was Cejudo. And who was the other one? Am I retarded? He lost to someone else. Um, I think that was, oh, it says it on the fucking screen. He lost to Faber, but that was a featherweight. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can maybe not count that. So if you want to say 14 and 3, by my logic, because the Faber fight was a feather, because, but the thing is, like, he has a win over Faber at featherweight, oh, sorry, he has a win over Faber at bantamweight, and then a win over, and a loss over him at featherweight, and I forgot what the third fight was, I think he, because he beat him twice, I know that, but I forget, were they both at bantamweight, both at featherweight, 1-1, one, one, I'm not sure, so I was just say, chuck the Faber one in there, um, his Faber did fight a bit of his career at bantamweight, but Marab, O'Malley, Jan, Aldo, Cejudo, Marais, and then chuck in Dodson too, why not? Um, but those top four there, O'Malley, Jan, Aldo, and Cejudo, all champ, all four champions, Aldo's like second greatest featherweight of all time, Jan, incredible elite bantamweight, Cejudo, two-division champion, O'Malley, previous champion. All of those wins are elite, and I just don't see that level of wins with Dominic Cruz. Now, he beat a, D, a DJ when he was just forced to fight it, and this is not like a, oh, Volk lost to Islam, we can just discredit it for Volk, um, and just not we can just not make a big deal out of it because he was feather. Like, no, DJ was genuinely like a midget fighting it with bantamweights. Like, Volk could go up and fight the back half of his career, or I think he's way past the half, but like the back, like, like fifth of his career at... Um, at lightweight, and I think he'd do fine. But DJ, his skill-wise, he's there. But you saw it when he went over to bantamweight. Marais is fucking twice his size. Like DJ's a midget. He's five foot two. Um, so you can, yeah, I'll count. I didn't have that win in DJ's losses because it wasn't a flyweight. But this is a bantamweight win for Cruz. So you can credit him that. But I don't think that's the same as like if he was a contender on the way up and. 48, 47, fucking DJ or whatever he did. Um, so it was a good win for Cruz, don't get me wrong, uh, but I don't think it's quite as good as like a normal win over DJ would be at flyweight when he's not undersized. Dillashaw, close fight, still good win. Benavides twice, Faber twice, Munoz. Not a lot of depth. Now, I know he's got seven title wins. So you're going to be like, oh, no, not even all of those were title wins. Where are the other ones? He beat fucking Jorgensen or whatever his name was and Bowles. Like, some of those wins, I'm not even going to put them in best wins. Like, they were just WEC fights. Now, I know everyone's like, WEC, Dominic Cruz, people forget, man. Um, but, like, some of those guys were just bums. Like, they weren't that good. Um, but Mar- Marab... His modern wins have been elite. So I think O'Malley, Jan, Aldo, and Cejudo clear, like, DJ, Dillashaw, and Benavides and Faber, even if you put the two wins for each of them together, in my opinion. So I think Marab's resume in terms of wins is better. I think that's undeniable. But uh, Simone and Sainz, Sainz is a fucking awful loss. But even, bro, Cruz, not in his prime. He was coming off, like, he does, riddled by injuries. Um... Dominic Cruz was, but still, like, I don't know, it, losing to Garbrandt's just a terrible look. I know Garbrandt looked amazing on that night, and everyone's like, oh my god, this if Garbrandt ever shows up like that again, he's amazing, but like, I think that was just Garbrandt game plan for Cruz, and was 
had the style to beat Cruz because Cruz is pillow hands and he doesn't have power. And if you're looking at the two of them, Cruz and Marab are both quite decision-heavy fighters. Um, but Marab's 50-45 and 49-46ing or against Cejudo, dominant 29-28, which would have been a probably 49-46 if it kept going, if it went five, compared to Cruz's split decision, you know, against Dillashaw. Not discrediting a win over Dillashaw, it's a great win. But I think Marab's resume clears. Look, I think it's difficult to make the case that someone with no defenses is the GOAT because obviously you can't just have a great pre-UFC, like pre-title resume and then just get GOAT status. Like that is a rough case to make. But I think if he beats Umar, even though it wouldn't be a champion, I think an Umar win shits all over anything Cruz has, in my opinion, in terms of difficulty at that time. And also, obviously, DJ. Like, I'm just going to say, just because he doesn't have a belt, maybe not as good as the Dillashaw win, but like Marab, like Marab beating Umar, Marab beating 50-45 and PD Yarn, I'm sorry, that shits all over any of Cruz's wins, in my opinion. So I think if he beats that, it's a strong conversation. And honestly, if I think if he gets past Umar, he's just got a free path to like five title defenses. Because like, I don't think anyone past Umar has got a chance of beating him. I don't think Figgy beats him. I don't think Yarn beats him in a rematch. I don't think O'Malley beats him in a rematch either. I mean, maybe. He could, he could always just get caught. But, like, he's got time. He's not that old. He's old-ish, but not, like, super old. He's not 36. Um, so unless he just shows up washed and dies and loses, he's probably not going to be too active, so maybe that'll cost him in terms of racking up some defenses. But if he beats Umar, defends the belt once, and then one more defense against Figgy Yarn, it's undeniable he's the band to my goat. I think there's already a case to be made, but obviously it's difficult with the lack of defenses. But Umar and then Figgy, or Umar and Yarn in a rematch would just absolutely clear Cruz's... Because I think his resume is always already better, but obviously the defences aren't there because he didn't get the belt because he had to go on an 11-fight fucking win streak to get there. But Marab, I think, is actually very close. I think it's better. The reason I got it 50% because he's one win away, but I think the 50% is because I really don't know if he's going to beat Umar. Like, I think that's like a 50-50 fight. And if he beats him, that 50% number goes to like 95% and I think he'll get there. Uh, but yeah, that's what I have to say about Marab. Let's move on though to the featherweight division. So we move to featherweight and you might be asking why is Jose Aldo not here? And the answer is because he's not the featherweight goat. Volkanovski passed him up. Now maybe, look, Volk could regress and lose like four times and that might bump him down because Aldo did lose, right? He lost to Connor, he lost to Holloway twice and he lost to Volkanovski. And unless I'm tripping, I think those were the four losses. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, those were the four because then he went to Bantamweight and lost to Jan and Morris. So those were the four losses for Aldo at Featherweight, right? If Volk loses, this is the funny thing because he can pass Aldo up, lose, still be past Aldo. But if he loses a couple more, he could drop below him because Aldo never went on just a career fucking downfall like Anderson Silva. Like he lost to the best guys. And if Volk then loses to the best guys, that could then be like, eh, maybe he goes below Aldo. But for now, I think he's above him. I think his wins are just way better. Um, but Ilya Tapori, let's talk about Topodio as well. Yeah, fucking little midget. Reminds me of a retard Artem Lobov. Um, 6 0 in the UFC in the featherweight division. Obviously, I know 15 0 is his record. 6 0 in the UFC at featherweight. I'm discarding the Dry Herbert win. It was a lightweight. Volkanovsky 13 1 at featherweight. The two Islam fights. I'm not counting towards this discussion. And you can say, oh, you've coped. No, this is a featherweight discussion. This is not an all time list. All time, yes, those count. Featherweight, no, not a featherweight fight. Um, six title wins compared to one for Ilya, so Volk's got the advantage there, um, but Ilya, not a lot of wins on the resume, but the one at the top of the list is elite and top five all time, so Volkanovski and then Emmett and Mitchell I'll put in there, solid wins, no losses, Volk, Holloway three times, Yaya Ortega, Aldo Mendes, TKZ, Darren Elkins, if you want to put Darren, if I can fancy anyone in some Darren Elkins discussion, you know, want to dabble in some Darren Elkins talk, you know, reminiscing the prime of the damage, um, but um, losses at featherweight, it's Taporia, his other loss was at welterweight before the UFC, not relevant to this, so one relevant loss, now it remains to be seen if he will fall off, I hope not, that will be disappointing, but um, Ilya, I think he needs four defences to get there, Um Conditional, obviously Holloway would be one. That would be massive. That would be like Drickus beating Whitaker and Izzy, in my opinion, but like maybe even better because Whitaker's not the second greatest middleweight of all time. Like if Hollow if Ilya beats Volk and Holloway back to back, he would have wins over 
I mean, there's still a very strong case to be made that Holloway is greater than Aldo. I won't quite make it. It's very close, though, and I don't mind the take. Um, but if you want to make a take, Aldo is the third greatest featherweight of all time. You could say that Ilya would then have wins over the two greatest featherweights of all time, and therefore, how could he not already be number one? But again, you do need an element. Like, you can't come in, beat Holloway, Volkanovski, Lopez, and then just dip and then be featherweight guy. Like that's not gonna how it work. that's not gonna be how it works. You still gotta stick around and actually create a proper legacy. Um, but yeah, I Volk's advantage. He's got all time wins. He's got the three wins over Holloway and the Aldo win. But Ilya could get close to that. I think one win over Volk is better than the rematch. I think the re- one win over Volk is better than Volk's rematch win over Holloway. Right. Um, and then if he beats Zillia in a 50-45 decision or whoops his ass or something or finishes him, if he finishes Max, then that's, in my opinion, would be a better fight, a better performance. If he has a 48-47, Volk's third win clears. But it's like you kind of got to mix and match the resumes and the the, the wins, sorry, and compare them. Um, so it would be very close. Uh, but if he beats Max, that's one defense. If he then beats Lopez and then beats Volk in a rematch, that will be two or th- and then three defenses. Even there, if you got Volk twice, Holloway and Lopez as title wins, honestly, I wouldn't even hate that take that he's there. But if you want, if you require some longevity to call him the goat of featherweight, give him another one. Maybe a, um, maybe a Gene Silver, maybe a Arnold Allen, maybe a Yair, one of these guys. But I think five would, if he matches Volk's defenses with wins over Volk and Holloway, he clears. And I think four, there's still a take. Now, I know people are going to be like, oh, but then the next champion after Ilya, if they just beat him, then they only need three. Like, no, there's an extent to where it's like, okay, you got to really match the wins. You can't just beat, like, one guy. You can't just beat the featherweight guy and then become the featherweight. That's not how it works. That's why I'm saying he's not there if he beats Holloway. Like, he needs to do more work. I think there's a good chance, though. Not because it's not difficult, because he needs to rack up a bunch of wins, but I think he can get there. I think he's good enough, and I think he can secure the wins that he needs to. So I think Ilya does have a solid chance of passing Volk up if he stays committed to the game, which I think he will, and if he stays locked in and gets those wins, I think he can get there, to be honest. Uh, let's move on, though, to the lightweight division. Weight division, this is the one where, I mean, I'm tempted to just put two pictures of Islam Makachev and say, what can he do to pass himself up? But that would be a boring discussion. Uh, so for the sake of this, I will say Khabib is still the lightweight goat, which is not an unreasonable take. Like, I'm, it's not an egregious thing to be like, oh my God, you said Khabib's the lightweight goat, casual. Like, no, I'm not going to be that guy. But I think Islam's past him, and I'm saying 90% in case, in, in the terms of like, if he then loses, he drops. Like, you can be above someone, lose and go below them. I think everyone agrees with that. You can go above someone on the basis of your wins, but they might have, they might have, only, they might have one loss, Right. And you also have one loss. Your wins are better, but then you lose again. Like, and then there's a case to be made that you drop below them. Obviously, Khabib, his legacy is set. He's not going to lose. Obviously, he's cemented. Um, apart apart from Volk, and um, apart from I think and Jones, and I mean Stipe, but no one's really going to count that towards his legacy that much. Um, Cruz is basically retired, but everyone else is like they're set. Their legacy is set, and there's a clear target to overcome. Where there's like if Volk loses twice in a row. Ilya's path to get featherweight goat status is like arguably one fight shorter. Like he could still get there with just like three defenses instead of five, in my opinion. But Ilya, not Ilya, Islam against Khabib. Both four title wins. Islam's got more lightweight wins in the UFC, 15 and one in the UFC at lightweight. The one loss, obviously, to Pantoja. Uh, knocked him out. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Still knocked him out. If you if you don't understand the joke and you're a casual fan, I'm talking about Martins. Obviously, it's a Brendan Shaw joke. Um, everyone should get that. But 13 and 0 for Khabib. He's not 29 and 0. I'm tempted to just call his record 13 and 0. I don't even want to be the guy to be like 29 and 0. Hamdullah. Like. He's 13 and 0. His pre UFC career was just bums. Like, if your pre UFC career is like in a respectable promotion, like even like LFA, Brave FC, one of these things, um, Ryzen, KSW, Cage Warriors, I'll count these wins. Khabib, he was fighting fucking plumbers and bums. Yeah, well, his father's shells. It was set up in another promotion. Um, so I don't count those wins. Like, you can say cope. No, I mean, like, there's a reason why I think counting just UFC record or, like, WC or Pride or this, like, you have to actually be fighting competition. Like, sure, overall MMA 29 no then anyone can just rock up and then fucking pad their record, get to 25-0, and get five UFC wins, 30-0, and and just dip. Like, hello? 
Is that what we're going to allow? And just call it how... Yeah, all right, sweet. Five wins, yep, go. 30-0, you're good. Um, so that's my opinion. Obviously, wins for Islam. Volk twice, Oliveira, Pore, Armin, Hooker. You can go Bobby Green, Moises, Doba. There's some solid outside wins there. Khabib beat Connor, Poirier, Gaethje, RDA, Barboza, Johnson. I'm going to say it how it is in my opinion. I think the versions of Poirier that both of them fought were comparable. Now, I actually think the version the version of Poirier that Oliveira fought was the best version of Poirier we saw. So I think it's quite disappointing that Oliveira's lost a few fights recently. Um because I think he would have a better case with... I think he's got the best Poirier win. I think he beat the best Dustin Poirier that showed up in the cage. Now, I know you could say Poirier was coming off the Holloway when he looked great. I think we saw it in terms of the IQ. Maybe his technique was a bit better, or maybe his box... Maybe he had a bit more power. Maybe he's a bit quicker to the punch. But he was jumping guillotines like a retard. He was being stupid. Islam beat him cleanly. Obviously, Khabib did a bit quicker in the third round. I don't want to sound like... Yeah, it was third round. Um... Islam did it in the fifth, obviously, but still, Islam was up 3-1 going to the fifth. I don't, I think people give too much credit to Khabib for like, he never lost a round or he didn't lose many rounds. Amazing. Congratulations. But in my opinion, it's not just about undefeated, no losses. I think you can lose and still be the goat of your weight class. Like, I think if Islam wins two more, gets to five title offenses and loses, he's above Khabib. I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, he lost, so therefore he's below him. Um, in my opinion, wins matter more than losses. If you win a bunch and lose a bit, then I, I think you're all right. If you win a bunch and lose heaps, then obviously and you have a bum fucking Anthony Smith for like 38 and 20 record or some shit like that, then yeah, obviously you can't be the GOAT. But like, I think Islam's already there, to be honest. But I'm saying beat Armin and it is like, in my opinion, undeniable. If In my opinion, if, if he beats Armin and you guys are being like, nah, he still needs to do more work. He's past the defences. Right now, defences are already equal. So it's not like I'm have, coming up with some dumb take saying like uh, that you guys can be like, oh, you're stupid. How are you saying that he could be greater than Aldo with seven when he only has five or Volk with five when he only has three or some shit like that? He's already matched the defences. So it's not like I, I even need to be like, oh, maybe he could have two less defences, but the wins will do better job for him. No, he's matched the defences. And if, in my opinion, his wins are better. And if he beats Armin... I'm just going to say, Armin fucking shits all over any of Khabib's wins. Like, Armin's a better win in a, in a more difficult, stylistic matchup than Connor, than Gaethje, than Poirier, than fucking RDA. Um, RDA's a great win. I think that doesn't actually get brought... Everyone goes Poirier, Gaethje, Connor. And then, for some reason, they go to, like, Barboza or, like, Aya Quinta. They go... Because they go in order of when he beat them. But they don't say RDA, who then went on to be a champion. So that's, like, Pereira beating Strickland. Like, great win. Um... Michael Johnson, I'll have him in there for Khabib, but I don't think it's that good. Um, but I'm not even putting Ally Quinta because that's not even good. Like, if I'm putting Ally Quinta, I'm putting Bobby Green for Islam. And I don't think anyone would accept Bobby Green as, like, a great win for Islam. But I think if Islam beats Armin, he's there. Uh, and if he loses to Armin, then you can be like, okay, yep, Khabib's got it. Because obviously that would be three cut. You would be able to say three cut off, but one of them had two losses. And one of the losses was, like, you can kind of throw away the Martins loss. It doesn't not exist, but it's not relevant to, like, the peak of Markachev. Like, if you're looking at what he's doing now on the win streak that he's on, you can kind of look at that and be like, eh, who cares? Like, we all know Islam beats him. It's fine. But, obviously, Khabib never had that, fair enough, but also was fed bums. I'm going to say, Khabib entered the UFC 16-0. 15-0, Ilya Tapori is already champion. Um, Hamzat Shamayev, I think he's 11 or no, 12, 12 and 0, about to fight Robert Whittaker, 13 and 0, about to have to fight Robert Whittaker to get his 13th mixed martial arts win. Khabib didn't fight good fighters until like 21, 22 and 0, 23 and 0. Like it's the last like six, seven fights of his career. T-Bow fucking went to a decision. Like, I'm not trying to shit on Khabib here, but I'm just trying to say that I do think Islam's greater than him all time. I think Khabib is definitely top 10, Maybe. Maybe maybe he's top fifteen. Um, no, I, I, you know I think I think Conor McGregor's above him. No, I'm kidding. But I'm I'm yapping here. But I do think I think his, Islam's already above him, and I think he's going to get there. I'm giving him a high percentage chance of getting there because I just think Islam's better, and I think sure Khabib might be a more dominant wrestler, and he's better at just taking people down and holding them there and beating the fuck out of them. Fair enough. Great style, very effective. Islam's beating guys standing. He's subbing the best submission guys. He's KO'ing strikers. 
He's doing all this. Like, I, I'm not even, like, a massive Islam fan, but I just sometimes sit there and be like, and just deep it and be like, yeah, yeah he's literally the fucking one of the best fighters ever. Um, like, skill-wise, he is. So I think Islam's there, but anyway, let's move on to the welterweight division. This video is going to go for a fucking hour. So we got the welterweight division, Belial Muhammad. Um, remember the decision? No, I don't even want to shit on Bilal. This is not going to be a Bilal fucking me just be a scumbag video and hate him for no reason because i do acknowledge i do hate Bilal for pretty much no reason it's, it's sometimes justified but let's actually talk about this video and stick to the prompt of the video uh 15 and 3 welterweight record for belial uh 19 and 2 for george's saint pierre um 12 title wins for george saint pierre and uh one for belial so yeah he's got a fair way to go even further than, like, Pantoja against DJ. Um, best wins, though. He's got a great pre... I'll give Bilal this. He's got an amazing pre-title strength of schedule. Obviously, Edwards for the belt. Burns, Wonderboy, Luke, Brady, Meyer. Like, that's th five top 10, top 15 welterweights who are... You could make a very good case are just better than, like, half of Khabib's... Not Khabib's, half of GSP's uh, defences. Like, you could be like, oh, yeah, but they didn't win belts or fight for belts. But, like, Wonderboy fought for a belt. He's real good. Burns fought for a belt. Um, Maya, you know, he fought for a belt. Um, Luke and Brady are solid. I think the Brady one's going to age very well, especially that he TKO'd him. No knockdowns, but it's all right. Um, losses, though. Jeff Neal, you, yeah, that's a bad loss for him. Luke, though, obviously did uh, avenge that. And then Joe Ban, you know, again, very early in his career. You can kind of toss that to the side. But GSP... It's just quantity. Like, it's just got a lot of quantity to overcome. Hughes twice, Penn twice, Diaz, Condit, Shields, Shirk, Kozchek twice, Fitch, Elvers. And you can be like, uh, Elvers, Fitch. But no, like, look at some of these guys' record and look at the, like, streak they were on going into title fights. I'm not going to do it now because I'm already talking for way too long without even checking records, which I was doing. Like, that's why it took so long for me to make this video because my autistic brain just required me to check everyone's record that they got these guys fought in their run just to remember how they were going. And I'm like, okay, some of these guys have goaded fucking like records. Like, like Sean Shirk's got a fucking good record. Fair play to him. Um, Koscheck, like Shields, you can say, yeah, if he, Diaz is solid. Um, uh, and I think a lot of guys can admit, like, GSP's, a lot of the wins are good. I know some of them, I think Lucas has the take that, like, oh, it's just old heads. I think Lucas jumps to the old head take straight away, which works for some. But I do think GSP... Like, that's why I don't have, like, Dan Hardy here. And I did leave out a lot. Because he had 11 fucking defences, 10 to... 9 defences, whatever. However many defences he had. Um, and they were... Obviously, the, the Sarah loss is awful. It's a terrible look. That is a awful look. And he beat him again. But that's why I don't have Sarah on the notable best wins. Because I don't think Sarah's a good win. Especially because he lost to him. So that's why I will critique GSP. Um, but I just think he's just elite and he's just, it's not even, that's not a hot take, obviously, but like GSP's him, bro. He's there. He's cemented top two all time, honestly, top three. If you really try and pick holes in his resume, um, but it's, his resume is not that whole pickable. If you know what I mean, you can say the losses are stinky, but he avenged both of them. So that's a good thing to have on his record. There is no single man, unless you want to count the Hendricks fight that beat him that he didn't beat. That's a very good thing on paper to have if we stick it on paper, Anthony Smith style. Um, but great wins for GSP. Belial, I mean, it's kind of a pointless thing. He's not going to surpass him, I think. Look, he could theoretically if he was like 32 and not about to lose to Shavkat. But if he beats Shavkat, amazing win. I do think that shits all over most of GSP's wins. Maybe Shavkat ends up being overrated. Um, but I also caution people against if Shavkat wins being like, or if Belial wins being like, uh, Shavkat got four checked, he... He had a close fight with Neil anyway. Um, but I do think that would be a much better win than, like, majority of GSP's defenses. But, like, if Bilal beats, like, a JDM, that, in my opinion, is just an on-smoke better version of Nick Diaz. Don't get mad. Um, better boxing anyway. But, like, I just think the quality of guys now is just better in the welterweight division. I think that's undeniable. Um... There's a few divisions where people be like, oh, it kind of fell off. They were way, way better back then. I think that's a definite case to be made with like light heavyweight. Um, but welterweight, I think it's clear easily these guys now are better. Like, I'm sorry, you throw Joaquin Buckley back in the fucking mid 2000s. 
he's probably a fucking champion. Like, he's the black Sean Shirk. Like, um, like I do think that, like, JDM, Bedtime did a video, Fair Play to him. I really wanted to do this video for a while, but obviously he got to it first. Um, but guys that would do well in different, like, guys that would be champions in different, like, timelines, um, and, like, JDM back in the fucking mid-2000s would be boxing people up. Like, these guys are elite. So if Bilal can get wins over them and get some defenses on his record, he can definitely cement himself. Like, I think... I, I don't even really want to put GSP here. I'm more tempted to put Usman here, even though Usman's not the world to I go, but just unless you ask Kenny Okoye. But put Usman here and talk about what can Bilal do to become the second. Because I want to actually have interesting discussions that feel like they could happen. Because if Bilal beats Shavkat, and then he beats Usman, and then Ian Gary, and then JDM, and then like a Carlos Pratt. Like he needs to it's he needs to get a lot. But his pre UFC rec- title record is elite. Um but you also just can't quite rank title non title wins quite as highly. You can for some of them, like Mara beating Yarn, but some of them you kind of have to be like, okay, yeah, but it wasn't for a belt. But I will say, I rate pre you getting the title shot or getting the title wins more than I rank you beating really good guys after you won the belt, but not for a title. Because to me, that's like, you've cemented yourself as, you've proven you're, it's been proven you're not the best guy, but you're still getting wins, so fair play. It's like Holloway beating Yair and Cater compared to his pre-title wins, or like you could say Marab's pre-title wins, where it's like, before he gets the chance to prove he's the best guy, he's already beating Cejudo, already beating Jan, already beating Aldo. With his, it's like, afterwards, it's like, yeah, you're not, the best guy, but you're still getting wins. So that's what I'm saying there. Still yapping. Again, tune in for a fucking hour of your left lane yap. That's what you're doing here. Um, but Bilal, four, five defenses, and then you can start to kind of make a bit of an argument based off, oh, Bilal's got better strength of opposition. I think like three, four, like three defenses, honestly. Shavkat, Usman, JDM, or like Shavkat, Ian, Gary, JDM, those three, Honestly, I think he clears Usman's because Usman, fucking rematch merchant. Kamaru Usman. Kamaru, rematch merchant Usman. That's his fucking nickname. Um, Colby and Masvidal. Like, I just don't rate Masvidal twice as title defenses, to be honest. Um, but enough, yeah. Let's move on to the middleweight division. It's pretty clear Bilal's not going to get there. It'd be kind of funny if he did, but he's, he's too old as well. He's 36. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the middleweight division. Middleweight division. A lot of people, a lot of the old heads are going to hate this take. I don't think Drickers Duplessis is that far off surpassing Anderson Silva. Now, I know the hardcore fans head just fucking exploded. The casual fans head just exploded. Sorry. Because I think actual hardcore fans can kind of deep it and be like, yeah, hang on, he's, he's cooking here. Um, now, Drickus Duplessis, 8-0 in the UFC, helps him a lot. Silva, six losses, pretty much all of those were back end. Uh, obviously, both Weidmans, Bisping, Hall, Cannoneer, and uh, the other one. Who was the other one? Wait, Weidman twice, Bisping, Hall, Cannoneer, and then was there one more? I'm retarded. There was one more, I know for a fact. I'm, I might just be dumb. Um, but Anderson Silva, oh, and Izzy, yeah, Izzy. Jizzy. Uh, but Drickus obviously helps that he's undefeated. Silva, you can kind of discard those losses because a lot they were. I think he lost for the first time when he was 38. So that's. I know Lucas loves the Volk lost when it was statistically permissible to lose. Silva only lost when he was 38. So that's fair. His longevity was nuts. He was on a massive win streak. But something needs to be said. Half, not half, but like there was multiple of those wins where like the main things you'll see apart from like the Vitor front kick on a. Anderson Silva highlight reel were wins against bum light heavyweights in the middle of his title reign. Because this dude, I wish we would do this now, is just like, if he doesn't have a contender, just let him fight a random fucking contender fight in another weight class. It's just fun. Like, this guy was just fighting Forrest Griffin casually, upper weight class, not for a belt, not for an interim title, in the middle of his title reign. Like, it was so random that this even happened. Uh, But Silva... Yeah, 14 and 6. Not the best look. Now, it's funny because out of those 14, pretty much all of those were middleweight title fights. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. But Drickus, the wins, I think, just clear. Like, their quality is better. There's not many of them. But Izzy, Whitaker, and Strickland, Izzy and Whitaker especially, Strickland is actually established himself as a very solid fighter. Not Hall of Fame fucking all-time level, obviously, but very solid. On the middleweight list, I guess, in the conversation somewhere, top 15, top 10 middleweights or something. I don't know. Um, Strickland's solid, but Drickus, yeah. Izzy, Whitaker, Strickland, Brunson, Till, Tavares. I'm just going to say Brunson, Till, Tavares, 
I mean, Anderson Silva beat Brunson. Derek Brunson sucks. But, like, Till Tavares, like, those guys are probably probably causing some trouble for Anderson Silva. No, I'm, like, they're not causing trouble. But, like, those guys are probably getting title shots in, uh, in Anderson Silva's, like, middleweight division era. Like, that's what I'm saying there. Losses, none in the UFC. Lost to Solich outside it. But I'm talking about UFC here, just UFC. So, cry about it. Anyway, uh, Silva, Vitor, Sonnen twice. I just don't like... I don't know why I have those at the top. Vitor's a great win, but Sonnen twice and won at the first fight. You were jaws of fucking defeat. Hendo, great win. Marquardt, Franklin twice. Maya, Cote. Maya fight was shit. Cote's good. Latus, Brunson... Off, like, in the middle of his loss streak. Um, but, yeah, like, the wins are good, but they're not incredible. Like, there's no... And the losses to Weidman, Bisping, Izzy. So you can kind of discount... I only put Weidman once because you can discount the... Um, you can kind of discount the leg break. That's a bit fluky. But, like, you get KO'd by Weidman trying to be a goof. Bisping, you just shouldn't be losing to Bisping at any stage of your career, to be honest. Um but the losses, the, the losses aren't good, good, but you can kind of excuse them. But the wins, I just don't think are amazing. The KO over Vitor is sick. Obviously, you give him points, championship, like, GOAT points for style, I guess. Like, if he was beating all these guys by decision, I genuinely don't think people would even have him in their top, like, 10 goes. <laughs> Maybe not top 10, but, like, top 5. Everyone's like, how can you not have Silver in your top 5? Like, if he was just decision maxing and doing, like, and all of his fights were, like, the Maya fight, the people would not care about the resume, because it's not the resume that people bring up, it's just, oh my god, look what he did, this front kick, and look at how, look, look at the, look at this highlight of him evading punches from Forrest to bum, bar fighter Griffin, like, I don't think his wins are that good, and I think it's really an over hot take to say that, um, so, if Drickus, that being said, if Drickus beats, Sean Strickland, because that fight's going to happen next, so that'll be a rematch there. The first, the Strickland fight was close, but that is the only controversial win on his record, and it's not even, like, controversial, it's just could have gone either way. It's not like a robber, it's not Jones Reyes, um, but if he beats, what am I thinking? Silver's advantage, obviously, title wins, bunch of, like, it's numbers. Drickus's advantage, all-time wins, way better wins than Silver in terms of quality. Um, just saw a notification pop up on my phone saying Radke's fighting Matthew Semmelsberger. Big Marcel shout out. Um, but three to four more title defenses, I think is a very easy task, like easy take to have that he would then be in GOAT conversation because Strickland, uh, winner of Drickus and Hamza, also winner of uh, Whitaker and Hamza, I should say. Uh, and then like Cannoneer or, Bar- not Cannoneer, uh, Kaio Baraglio or Amavov. And then maybe like a Pereira or Fluffy down the line. If he gets those guys, those wins are all better than anything Anderson Silva would have, really. Like Vitor, he's good, sure. But like a bunch of these guys are bum ba dum bum bums, as LT would say. Um, so yeah, Drickus, I don't think he's that far off. I don't think he's there yet. I'm not trying to make the case that, oh, you beat Strickland, he's there. Like, no, that would be ridiculous to say two defenses would clear 11. That's the thing. But you need to have a very... I'm not saying anyone can just... I'm not saying all modern era fighters can get five defenses and then clear the guy with 11 or some shit like that. No. But if you have the wins, that's why I think people agree that Volk is greater than Aldo. Or many people can see that take and it's not unreasonable. It's not ridiculous to say that. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's a crazy take to say that someone with five defenses that are just so much better... Like, Izzy, second greatest of all time. Whitaker, like, arguably third or fourth greatest of all time, honestly. Um, even without a massive title reign. He's just been there for ages. So, I don't think it would be a crazy take to say a finish over Whitaker, a finish over Izzy, first guy to sub Izzy, one of the first guys, or not one of the first, but, like, beats Whitaker in, and one of the best versions of Whitaker we've seen. And it's and the thing is, it's not a Whitaker win that aged badly because Whitaker then went on to win multiple fights after that. So, I think Drickus is on smoke right now. If he can get past Hamzat and Strickland, I could see him racking up a few more. And he's got time as well. He's young. He's in his early 30s. He can get there. Shout out, Drickers. We share the same birthday. Just leaked my birthday for you. Um, but yeah, Drickers Duplicy, I don't think he's that far off Anderson Silva just based off the quality of his wins. Anyway, light heavyweight division. Light heavyweight division now. Hear me out. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to be like, oh, Pereira needs one more defense and he's there. No. Um, look, it's. I'll have the conversation because it's the point of the video. He's not going to get there. It's just too many defenses and he's just, people are never going to accept not, Jones not being light heavyweight go because the Jones Glazers will be like, you're just hating, man. Um, Dana White will come out of the woodworks and be like, guys, guys. Well, what's the question? John, John Jones? Dana, no one said anything about John Jones. John Jones is a whole nother level. <laughs> um, but 
5-0 and at light heavyweight for Pereira, so obviously not a lot of work done there. That's the thing. You're going to need... All of his wins are going to be great. Like, there's going to be no on-the-come-up wins over fucking Matt Hamill or some shit. Like, there's going to be no bums on the come-up. Like, he's, every single one of his light heavyweight wins is going to be good if he gets them. They're all going to be top 10. Um, and Roundtree, I think, I think is going to age well. Like, if Roundtree then goes on... Um, and then, like, becomes a consistent top five guy there, then you're going to look at that win the same way as, like, a Jones beating, who could I say, who's comparable? Like, a maybe, like, a Rashad or, like, a Rampage. Like, I know it's not quite the same, and everyone's going to be like, how dare you say that, man? Because the light heavyweight division, the title back in the day before Jones won it was fucking passed around more than Leila Machado. Um, so everyone's got a belt. So you can just look at Jones's resume and say, look how many former champions he beat. Because they all won the belt and fucking lost it immediately because they all sucked. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm just sitting up for my chair. But um, you can look at that and be like, look at all these former champions. But like, how many of them actually defended the fucking belt? Because like light heavyweight, it's been around for so much longer. So there's been an opportunity for all the fucking old heads to just win the belt. Shogun, Rampage, Rashad, all these fucking guys. I don't even know if Machida, Belford, I don't even know if half these guys won belts, but I'm just assuming they did. And if I just said it with conviction and said, yeah, this guy won the belt in 2006, uh, by first round TKO, like, would you disagree with me? Would you fact check me? Probably not. You just believe it. Cause all of these fucking guys, all the old heads, all win titles, um, but yeah, I'll say the DC win, incredible, that's one of his best wins, I think it's his best win, the, the first one, second one's not a win, PDs, no contest, uh, Gustafson twice, um, I'm not going to be one of the guys to say he lost, I think if you're going to make arguments that Jones lost fights, it's the Reyes fight first, it's the Santos fight second, and then you go to the first Gustafson fight if you're looking at like, oh, where can we pick robbery and stuff, like call robberies. I think it's the Jones, the Reyes one, which I'm literally counting as a loss. Because I, I know you're going to be like, oh, but what about Hendricks GSP? I think Reyes is just the most obnoxious fucking robbery decision ever. The fact that it was unanimous as well. If you want to say Hendricks beat GSP, 100% I'm not going to be like, no, bro, how dare you say that? Like, But I don't think it's like, I think it needs to be a... Because Lucas loves being like, just completely changing the course of history based off like slightly close decisions. Um... But I'm not going to do that, but I will do it if it's just completely obnoxious, which I think the Reyes fight was. But Pereira, Yuri, Yarn, Twice, Hill, Roundtree, no losses, which is good for him. Um, Jones, though, just it's like 5-0 and compared to 19-1-1. One one. I'm going to just call the Hamill fight no contest. If you want to call that a win, you can say 20-1 and one and then have the Reyes fight as a loss. But either way, if you want to go either on paper, he's got a loss. And if you want to go not on paper and change the course of history, he's still got a loss. Because you can't say, oh, yeah, he beat Hamill, but he still beat Reyes. You can't do that. Um, so... Yeah, but like DC, Gus twice, Glover. Glover's a great win in hindsight. But again, it's not like he went on a few... I'm not going to discredit Glover. Glover's a great win. Um, Vitor, Rashad, Machida, Rampage, Shogun. Did I write Shogun twice? I did. I'm retarded. Um, <laughs> Beta, Sonnen. I'm doing this video way too late at night. But Sonnen, I don't even want to have there. You can pick some other wins. Fucking OSP, I'm not even going to have that. Santos, not going to have that. It was not. A, it was a shit performance. Um that's why I shouldn't have even had Maya there for fucking Anderson Silva. Um, but yeah, like even Sonnen as a fucking win is just shows some of those defenses were a bit iffy. A lot of them were against fat middleweights, just saying. Look at all the guys Jones beat, how many of them won middleweight titles? Um, there'll be a couple. Not all of them, but a couple. Um, or fought a decent part of their career at middleweight. But anyway, Jones, I'm not trying to poke holes in his record. I kind of am because I don't like him as a person. But crazy resume. That's what... I don't think Pereira's getting past Jones's resume. He's got modern wins, I guess. KOs, yeah. So you can kind of make that case, but he needs a lot more. Like, th he's got three defenses now, four more defenses, gets to seven. You can kind of then... But it's not like Jones's resumes are just complete bums and nobodies that you're like, who was he even fighting, though? Like, the 11 defenses are all solid. Now, you could pick and choose some and be like, let's just throw out that Reyes one. That's not of a defense. Let's throw out the OSP one. That was shit. Like, you can pick and choose some of them. Jones also had a decent pre-title, like, opposition betas solid. Um, but, yeah, Pereira... He's going to need an Uncle I of Rakic winner, a Volkanos Demir Carlos Olberg winner, and then like a Merzakhanov Krylov winner with one more fight in between, and like a Blahovic rematch, and like another fucking rematch, and beat Vatikov or something. Like, he's going to need to do a lot. Now, the reason it's not 
like just like a five percent chance that I put is because he fights enough where if he beats Uncle Live and just goes crazy, he could fight like four times next year. Like if he fights Uncle Live in fucking February and they get Uncle on a short turnaround after beating Rakic, if he does, like if Rakic gives him a tough fight and they go fuck it, turn him around quick, February he could just run off February, May, August, December. And just fight four times. And then he might just fall off after that. But, like, he could do it in the time frame. That's why, like, with a guy like Pantoja, who's fighting twice a year, I'm going to be like, eh, nah. But Pereira's fighting basically four times within 365 days. So, like, he could do it. Uh, but, yeah, he's not going to get there. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to the final division. Heavyweight division. It's a pretty straightforward discussion. Now, 8-1 and one in the UFC for Aspinall. The Blades loss is not a loss, but whatever. We'll have it there. Um, fluky loss. But Stipe, six title wins. Great. He's got... Aspinall's got a little bit to overcome. Aspinall, I've counted two title wins. Given the... St- I wouldn't normally count interim titles, but given the state of the heavyweight division and given that he literally has just defended the belt, I'm calling it two title wins. They're championship wins. Uh, Stipe, though, great, great wins. DC twice is going to be difficult to overcome in terms of something Aspinall could pull off. And Garnu, Vadum, JDS, over and Malovsky, Hunt, Nelson. He's got quantity, right? He's got solid wins, Nelson. Yeah. There's some other wins, fucking Maldababo, uh, Gonzaga. You can you can make that case. You can be that guy if you really want to. Losses, though, four of them. Nganu, DC, JDS, Struve. Defend, re- obviously, the Nganu fight... Um, he won first and then lost afterwards. I think it's better to lose the first one, win the second. I think that's like makes it look a bit better for you. DC, he won the second too, so that one's a little bit more faded out. Same with JDS, I believe. Uh, and then Struve's not a great one, but he got eye poked, I'm pretty sure, in that fight. But Pavlovich, Blades, Volkov, Spivak, Tabora, Old Man Olovsky, you know. He needs a few more though. Garn, Volkov, winner. I've said here, any combination of these two wins, Jones, Volkov, Garn, winner, Pereira moving up, or like Jelton Almeida. I think if it's a Volkov gun winner and Almeida, it's a weak case, then he probably needs one more rematch of Blades, rematch of Pavlovich, something like that. Fight if there's some other guy at the time who's coming up. One of these guys. Um, but apart from that, I think like if he beats, like if it's Jones and Pereira, then okay, just fucking wipe Stipe off the board because Stipe is going to probably lose to Jones. If Stipe beats Jones, then we revisit this and then I say, okay, Aspinall's got to do some real work to get past that because that would be a crazy like resume uh, like call or claim to fame for Stipe to say beat John Jones at heavyweight when he's 42. That would be nuts. So then we'd revisit it and I would say maybe it's like four. four. Honestly, I think if Stipe beats Jones, that adds like another two wins. That uh, to win the belt back, that would add like another two wins that Aspinall would need to get. But I think he's going to get there. I've put it as like 80% because he's young, he's got time, and he's got the styles to do it. That's why I've said he's getting KOs as well. He's got the time to rack up all-time wins. Maybe he gets done and dirty and uh, and Jones and Stipe both dip and he doesn't get the chance to get one of those all-time wins like DC has or Stipe has with DC, I should say. Uh, but apart from that, I think... Aspinall's got a kind of free path. Like, as long as he doesn't fuck itself, fuck itself up or fuck it up for himself, I can't fucking speak English, turning into Curtis Blades. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a pretty easy path for him. I think he just needs to keep doing what he's doing, which is just smoking fools. Pereira moving up would be a big one. If he beats if he beats Pereira moving up and then Garn Volkov loser, or winner, sorry, or either way that happens, Pereira first or Garn first, doesn't matter. But if he beats that, if he beats Garn and Almeida... He's literally beat the entire like top eight of heavyweight. And then if it's Pereira moving up as the champion in the division below, that would be nuts. That would be free. And I want to see Aspinall just put together like five, six defenses. I'm not even a massive Aspinall fan, but I just like seeing guys rack up defenses and break the boundaries of the all-time list and try and push that record and stuff. So that's my opinion. That's my take. Um, but yeah, it's close. Like, Stipe, this is not like a ridiculous mountain to climb like he needs 30 fucking title defenses. Uh, so I think Aspinall can get there. But that is going to do it, guys. 50 fucking minute video. Hope you enjoyed. I was like, oh, this will be a quick video. I'll talk for like 20, 30 minutes. It's never 20, 30 minutes. I always yap. But if you made it to the end, greatly appreciate you. Give me a subscription if you enjoyed the video. If you like this type of content uh, where I actually try and talk about the sport more and not just be a retard, let me know and I'll do it. Uh, but if you want the shit talk, I'll get rid of these videos and I'll just shit talk. Like I, I can do both. I can do either. I'm, I'm open. Um, much like Layla Machado's legs. But, <laughs> or Nina, drama. But anyway, that'll do it. Peace out, guys. Drop some more videos you guys want to see in the comments. I've got predictions coming for this weekend's card because it's actually really good. But yeah, peace out, guys. Goodbye.